I uh, am absolutely committed, as I said last night, uh, as, as I said just now to my colleagues, uh, that we must go forward uh, based on truth. We cannot both uh, embrace the big lie and embrace the Constitution. And going forward, uh, the nation needs it. The nation needs a strong Republican Party. Uh, the nation needs a party that, uh, that is based upon fundamental principles of conservatism. And I am committed and dedicated to ensuring uh, that that's how this party goes forward, and I plan to lead the fight to do that. How concerned are you that former President Trump might end up back in the Oval Office, and what are you prepared to do to prevent uh, I uh, will do uh, everything I can to ensure uh, that uh, the former president never again gets anywhere near the Oval Office. We have seen the danger uh, that he continues to provoke with his language. Uh, we have seen his lack of commitment and dedication to the Constitution. Uh, and I think it's very important that we make sure whomever we elect is somebody who will be faithful to the Constitution. Last question. Last question. Last question. Last I do not. I think that uh, it is uh, an indication of where the Republican Party is, uh, and I think that the party uh, is in a place that we've got to bring it back from, and we've got to get back to a position where uh, we are a party that can fight for conservative principles, that can fight for substance. We cannot be dragged backward uh, by uh, the very dangerous lies of a former president. Thank, Thank you. Thank you very much. Hey guys, Mr. We will never know the numbers, never know the breakdown of how many Republicans would have voted to remove Cheney from the number three leadership post and how many would have stuck with her. We will never know because the House Republican leader, Kevin McCarthy, decided a voice vote would suffice. Back with me, CNN's Caitlin Collins and Lauren Fox. Um, democracies are stronger when we take votes on tough issues even when they're close. This would have been a private secret vote. We would have not known who voted. But why does Kevin McCarthy think it is okay when everyone is watching the direction of the Republican Party, when you're kicking someone out of your leadership who you stood by just a couple of months ago, to, let's just do this on a voice vote and run out of the room. This took all of about 16 minutes from the beginning to the end. That's the pl prayer, the pledge, the vote, because it was a voice vote. You know, Adam Kinzinger, who is a close ally of Cheney, someone else who is not afraid to speak out against Trump, said this was about, quote, fake unity, essentially that the leadership team didn't want any kind of breakdown of a vote coming forward any kind of public releasing of that information because they are trying to sweep this under the rug and move on for unity of the Republican Party as quickly as they can. Whether or not they're going to be able to do that and move forward with a new leader, I think we're going to have to see over the next couple of days. Uh, and as someone who covered the former president for quite some time, you understand how he relishes battles like this. He has issued a statement at least one a day for the last several days about Liz Cheney uh, calling her names, I'm not going to say on television, uh, really showing respect to his high office he once held uh, in the language he speaks. Uh, but her, well, he was in office. Right, right. Well, he didn't do it in office either. We hope for growth. Um, I will do everything I can to ensure that the former president never again gets anywhere near the Oval Office. So she's laying down the gauntlet as well here. She is, and she's unremorseful. I think that was the most striking thing about her speech last night that they announced just a few moments before. Those remarks today after she was pushed out by her own party for this. But I think what's so fascinating is that the way you're hearing from Kevin McCarthy and Mitch McConnell and Republican leaders are basically saying, let's get this over with so we can move on and move forward and talk about recapturing the House in 2022. But what is happening with Liz Cheney here and with former President Trump's statement is essentially just bringing it to the forefront, making it even more prominent and, and revealing his grip on the party, his power over some of these members. And so they're trying to say they're going to move on, but all this is doing is putting it at the top of the news cycle and making everyone focus. And with her saying her mission is to make sure Donald Trump doesn't get close to ever being elected president again, is saying, I'm not going away and I'm going to continue to say what I've been saying every day. And there was that Politico quote the other day in Playbook where, a Republican congressman said, you don't have to echo Trump's election lies, but you can't stand up every day and give him the bird, basically saying right. that's what Liz Cheney has been doing. It sounds like she's going to keep doing that, though. Right. And again, Republicans are trying to make this about Liz Cheney. I would say it is in part about Liz Cheney because she, yes, she welcomes this fight. But if Trump would stop repeating the lie, she would have to challenge him. And he keeps repeating the lie every day now. Almost every day this week, we've had a statement. The other day it was about Michigan. The day before that it was about somewhere else. It's just a lie. And so if he would be quiet about it. I'm using polite language. Maybe she would as well. But to your point about where we're going, she's on the ballot in 2022. If President Trump, former President Trump, tries to come back, that would be in 2024. She gave an interview, Congresswoman Cheney did, with NBC just after the vote. Listen.
A lot of people frame this as a battle for the soul of the Republican Party. This is the, I think, opening salvo in that battle. And, and it's a battle we have to win um, because it's not just about the Republican Party. Uh, it's about the country. The Trump political team is actively looking to coalesce around a primary challenger to you. What is your message to them? You know, uh, bring it on. Uh, so there you go. So this, the Republicans say we needed to do this, even the people who voted with Liz Cheney on impeachment, even people who believe her and support her views on the big lie. We have to move on. We can't keep talking about this. There's no way. There, there's no way to escape it because Trump will try to primary her. She will if he runs, whether she runs in 2024 or whether she's just active against him in 2024, this is with us. Well, that's exactly right. And I think that, you know, when we look at 2024 and whether or not Trump is going to get in that race, whether or not he would have the support of Republican leaders in that race, just look over at the U.S. Senate. Yes, a lot of House Republicans are with Donald Trump. A lot of Senate Republicans are, too. I don't want to overstate that. But the reality is Mitch McConnell does not talk about Donald Trump being the leader of their party anymore. We have not heard him utter that kind of thing in weeks, months. And I think that that is really a critical point to look moving forward. Is someone like Tom Cotton the future? Is someone else the future, Josh Hawley, perhaps? But I think, you know, if the president or former president thinks that he is a shoe in for 2024, he's got another thing coming because a lot of Republican senators are not necessarily going to just get in line behind him, just like what you've seen in the House of Representatives. But I think what's so interesting about that, if that is the dynamic, and of course we're speaking hypothetically, is that was kind of how it was when he ran the first time. He did not have the support of a lot of these people. That's why we talked so much about how extraordinary the turn on Jeff Sessions was was because he was the first Republican senator to come out and actually have Trump's back. A lot of those Republican leaders at the time were distancing themselves, ready for a Hillary Clinton beatdown, and it didn't happen. So it only emboldens him at times. But it is fascinating to watch these Republicans stick their neck out for a president who was a one-term president, which is something that is so rare these days. One-term president. But they look at their own polling, and 7 in 10 Republican voters believe the big lie, because they've been told it so often. They, tr they believe it, which is a shame and a scourge on the country right now. The challenge is, you heard Liz Cheney saying the gauntlet, laying down the gauntlet against former President Trump. I'm interested to watch how she and those who are like-minded are against about the current leader, Kevin McCarthy, because here's a little example of Kevin McCarthy uh, right after the insurrection and then after his visit to Trump in Mar-a-Lago. The president bears responsibility for Wednesday's attack on Congress by mob rioters. He should have immediately denounced the mob when he saw what was unfolding. I was the first person to contact him when the riots was going on. He didn't see it. What he ended the call was saying, telling me he'll put something out to make sure to stop this. And that's what he did. He put a video out later. Uh, whatever your views, whether you supported Cheney, didn't support Cheney, it is just a fact. Uh, Kevin McCarthy trying to rewrite history there after the fact because he believes his path to the speakership is staying on Trump's good side. I mean, that's exactly right, John. I mean, Republicans support Donald Trump. Republican voters in conservative districts support Donald Trump. And Kevin McCarthy knows there is no way, no path to win back the House in 2022 and become the speaker without Trump. That calculation, no matter what happened on January 6th, no matter the fact that he was there that day, he was afraid that day, like many of us were, there is no way to move forward without Donald Trump for Kevin McCarthy. And I think that's, that's the bottom line here. That's the story. This isn't about moving on. This is about embracing Trump and sticking with him. My Kevin, as the former president says of Kevin McCarthy. On that, he's correct.